Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, and welcome to the call for the afternoon. And uh, good to see everybody here. And uh, pretty excited about what we're going to be talking about today. And hopefully, uh, you're doing well. And um, really, uh, this uh, th this particular topic, um, I think, will be beneficial uh, to everyone. Um, you know, in one way or the other. But definitely, you know, for those of you who are creating your own events and those of you who are creating events for your clients. And if you think about it, one of the things that you run into is the expense of being able to do things the right way and to have people that, you know, when you go to, you know, a, a seminar, you have an expectation. You expect to be able to have uh, a few extras. You expect to be able to have uh, a nice things. And sometimes, you know, it can be cost prohibitive for you or your client to put those things in place. And one of the ways that you can defray some of that cost and actually put on a nice event is to have it sponsored. And there are lots of other ways and uh, other things that a sponsor can be, uh, uh, I think, beneficial to you. But that's just one way that I think of right off the bat. And uh, so, as always, I would suggest that you sort of get something that you're going to write with um, get some uh, get some notes. Be ready to ask uh, some good questions here. Uh, we actually have uh, someone uh, that I think uh, not only can can share this with you, but somebody who's experienced uh, in the industry and uh, uh, you, you know experience in anything these days is at a premium. So I'm going to be introducing you uh, to Robert Smith. And uh, Robert um, actually. Uh, he's uh, he, he's really sought after, you know, on this particular topic on marketing and getting sponsorships. He's been doing this since 2005, right? So so you know, uh, I I I think he's got a little. I think he he probably knows a little bit about a little bit in order to share with us. So uh, I'm going to pretty much just kind of turn it over uh, to Robert and let him. Uh, share his insight with you on this uh, on this very uh, very important topic. And uh, again, uh, if you have questions, what I'd like for you to do is to just type them into the question box. Okay, so where you see uh, it says question, just type your question in there as they come in. And uh, when we get to the end, pretty much what I'll do is uh, I will uh, I'll uh, put those uh, to Robert. So as you as you as you think of them. Okay, as you as you start to think about it, as you start to get them, then uh, then go ahead and put your questions in uh, the box. Okay, so with that, uh, uh, Robert, uh, if you're there, uh, you can uh, take it over, my friend. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. And like you said, uh, I started doing well. First of all, again, I'm Robert Smith with Champion Media Worldwide, which is a marketing and PR firm, and um, in the Chicago area. I started in 2005 with the sponsorships, but I've been doing marketing and PR since 1999. I just, again, kind of like a late, a Johnny come lately when it came to sponsorships. I was just like everybody else, running a business, thought an idea about events and seminars, had no clue about this world of sponsorships, so I put up my own money, I put everything into it, um, managed to make you know, some of them successful, some flopped, some did okay, some went very, very well. Um, that was prior to 2005 when I when I came across the idea of sponsorships. And the biggest reason I see in having, you know, talk with hundreds and hundreds of business owners, the reason they don't use sponsorships is because they, again, they were kind of ignorant, for lack of a better word, to it being available to them. We always think you have to be a well-recognized, well-established, or Fortune 500 company or some big guru to get sponsors, and that's simply not true. What you do have to have is something in it for the sponsor. So if I'm going to approach a particular sponsor, I can't look at it from what I'm getting out of the deal. I have to look at it and, and, and paint a picture of what they're going to get, how it benefits them, and when they can see that picture and the dollars make sense, then you'll get sponsorships all day long. But if any one of those are missing, if it's all about you, if I see no benefit as a sponsor, and, or you know I don't, I don't see the return on my investment, then you're, you're going to 
you know, be, it's going to be very tough for you to, to get a sponsor. So that's the first thing for you guys to know and understand that sponsorships are for you. Now what you want to do is whatever niche you're in, whatever your, your events, whatever you're doing, if it's financial, if it's real estate, if it's time management, if it's um, whatever it is, if it has nothing to do with business, you can have more personal, how to raise you know, better kids, how to be a better parent. That can be a seminar or a conference where you can get sponsors. So here's what I do. I, I do a quick list, and I'm kind of old school. I still get the phone book. I know most people use Google, but I still just like having a phone book in my hand. And here's the process I go through. Even to this day, when I do a sponsor, when I do an event, and I do two to three events a year for my own company, plus I have 40 plus clients, they do events. But the first thing I do is I look at, I find out where does someone have to go, what else do they need before they do business with me. That's the first thing. Identify, okay, before you buy from me, what else do you need to have, where else do you need to go. While you're doing business with me, what else do you need to have? Where else do you need to go? After you've bought from me, where are you going and what else do you need? So I'll, I'll say that again. You want to identify what someone needs or where they need to go before they do business with you. While they're in the process of doing business with you, what else do they need and where do they go? And then after you've, you've provided a service or sold a product, where do they go next? Those three questions are very, very, very important, and here's why. Once you identify all of that, then all you have to do is, is find out and figure out who provides that and go to those people. Those are perfect sponsors for you. Here's an example. Again, a lot of examples I'm going to share will just be you know, my own business. I've been doing this long enough, and it's just easier uh, because I personally did it. I have a marketing company. So before someone comes to me, what do they need? They need to be in business. A soccer mom's not going to call me and hire me. So they need to be in business. Okay, so where do you go? If you use uh, your own name, then you really don't have to go anywhere. But a lot of type, uh, businesses, you need a license. So there's a state or a government office you need to go to. If you're incorporating, either you're going through your state, you're going through a law firm that does incorporations, or you're using one of the many you know, incorporation services. So I've, I've identified where you need to go before you even come to me. You need to have a business. It needs to be either licensed, it, you need to be credentialed, you need a, a DBA, as we call it here in Illinois, a doing business as certificate with your county clerk. So I went to all of these organizations, and some are going to be uh, potential sponsors, some won't. But what we're doing is we're, I'm giving you a quick and easy way to build a list of potential sponsors because most people don't have a strategy behind that. They just say, okay, well, I want such and such as a sponsor. Okay, but if you break it down to a science and a formula, you'll get, you'll get uh, better results. So then once you identify where you need to go, who you need to talk to before they do business, then while I'm performing the, uh, the service, you know, providing the marketing or PR, whatever they hired me to do, and then I'll ask questions. Maybe they're doing something else. Maybe they need a logo. Maybe they were thinking about doing radio. Maybe they're thinking about doing a billboard. So those are other companies that I can approach for potential sponsors. Then after they bought from me, I do the same thing. Um, if it's a finished product, okay, maybe they're going to take their product to a distributor, um, a retail outlet, a, a big box chain. So those are other potential sponsors. And again, I go to the potential sponsors because we have the same clients. If I'm serving a small business owner or a mid-sized company, and they are, then they have some interest in reaching small and mid-sized companies. And then that's my approach. I'm doing a seminar with between 200 and 400 attendees. Um, this is the makeup of the type of people who are going to be there. I know you service this type of clientele, and so do I. And so that's kind of how I get in the door by first identifying the proper uh, businesses to go after. That, I mean, as, as simple as that strategy is, it saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of money. And you can easily delegate that and turn that over to an intern, an assistant. You can outsource it. You can find somebody on Fiverr to say, okay, 
research all these people, Google them, use their phone book, send me the list, or contact them on your behalf. Um, so that's that's where I start um, with finding out who's the, who are the right people to go after. Then when you do that, you want to have different packages. And what I mean by packages is you want to have different levels. A gold levels, platinum, diamond, silver, blue, red, whatever you want to call it, because they're going to be people who want to people who are going to want to come in at different levels. Whether it's a thousand dollar sponsorship, here's what you get, five thousand, ten thousand, all the way up. So this gives them an uh, option and it gives the uh, potential sponsor choices. And obviously the more they spend, the more they're going to get. So you really want, you know, you make the $1,000 sponsorship level, you know, maybe if, if it's a three-day event, they sponsor the lunch, the dinner, the breaks. You know, this break was brought to you by ABC Company. Um, this lunch or dinner was provided by, you know, that's the, that's the low level. Other things you can do, with, you can do banners. You can do uh, banners on the website or even at the event. You can give away gift bags. You can do takeaways. You can put the company sponsors on the on the material, on the handouts, on all of that stuff. The more touches they have, that they that the, the actual attendees can leave with, the better your selling point to them. Because they one of their biggest fears is they they put all this money up to sponsor your event. The customers, or excuse me, the attendees have a great time. They leave out of there and they think nothing about the sponsors. You're not going to get sponsors like that. So you, as many things as you can give away, as many ways as you can touch and stay in front of the attendees on behalf of a sponsor, this is going to help you guys, you know, get the check from a sponsor because that's what they're looking for is their work begins when the attendees leave. They're in a great mood. They're feeling excited. They, are, they connect the sponsor with a great event, and they want to look into it. They want to go to a website. They want to fill out a survey. They want to sign up for an email. They want to buy a product. So that's, again, that's the mindset of a, of a sponsor is to, is to, you know, for the attendees to take something away. Now, another way sponsorships help you guys is at, at, besides covering the cost of your event is you can make money for sponsorships. If it costs you ten grand to put on an event and you raise fifty thousand dollars in sponsorships, you just made forty thousand dollars. Most people when they put on the event, they focus on registration and ticket sales. That's the average I say, you know, guy getting started who hasn't really made, you know, six and seven figures doing this yet, is he's focusing on the registration, how many, you know, buds are in the seat. The next advanced guy is not only thinking, okay, registration. He's thinking, okay, product sales. How do I how do I sell my book at the back of the room? How do I sell coaching? How do I sell consulting? How do I sell my my, my services? So that's another a little bit more advanced than the guy that's just looking at registration. The guy who knows or gal who knows just a little bit more than that guy is not only focusing on registration back in room sales, but he adds sponsorships to the mix. And the more knowledgeable you are on the different ways you can make money, you know, I've, I've got clients, you know, they make hundreds of millions of dollars a year. They maximize what I say, they squeeze the profit out of everything. They'll sell their list of the people who attend it. They'll sell their mailing list of the people who they, they send information to but who didn't attend. That's a profit center. So even the people that they didn't make money off of, they make money off because they're going to rent the name. If I mean that's that's a that's a lucrative industry, selling you know uh, being a list broker or selling your your names, uh, email addresses. They sell everything, and so that's another profit center you're adding to it. Bringing in guest speakers. If you have a nice enough event. You have speakers who want to pay you to get on your stage. That's another profit center because the speakers are paying um, to be a part of your event. You know, it's another you know profit center that most people don't even think about. 
So hopefully this, this training is, is broadening your horizons, it's expanding your mindset so that you can see all of the different ways, or a lot of the different ways, I haven't gotten into all of the different ways, but a lot of the different ways that you may not be familiar with on how you can take one event, whether it's a one-day workshop, a two-day seminar, three-day boot camp, seven-day event, how you can maximize at every turn. But since this call really is about sponsorship, that, that'll be primarily my focus, is um, you know getting more sponsorship dollars. And so you, you start with finding the companies, and if you, you know, some of you who think big, and you say, okay, I want a, a large, well-known company, Fortune 500 company, to be a part of my event. Those typically can take 12 to 24 months or longer, especially if they don't know you. So what I found, if you want a large, comp well-known company, FedEx, UPS, um, the post office even, anybody who deals with small business owners, but they, they have you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of employees. There's no way you're going to be able to talk to the director of marketing or the person who's in charge of sponsorships at FedEx or UPS in Atlanta. There's no way they're going to take your call. I would go to the local regional office because many times they have a budget that's much smaller. It may be in the five or $10,000 range, but it saves a lot of the red tape it saves you from having to jump through many hurdles. It saves you time and effort instead of trying to always go through corporate. So just identify where is the nearest regional office to the big Fortune 500 company. This is going to be banks too, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, uh, Sprint, Verizon. Uh, I did a sponsorship with Lexus car dealership, um, NetJet, Airlines, you name it. Just find the regional office because they're much smaller. There's much le uh, less red tape, less drama you have to go through. And again, if, if, if you're okay with smaller amounts, you know, a $5,000 check here, a $8,500 check there, that's fine. But if you're trying to get $100,000, $250,000 for your event, then prepare to do a lot of work, prepare to have a lot of patience. So what this does is this cuts the time from implementation to getting results is to just focus on just the regional, you know, who's who's close to you where you can actually get in and get a meeting with them over the next two weeks. Um, another, you know, thing with sponsors, again, that's my strategy for those of you who want to get a larger sponsor, um, larger in the sense of name recognition. Uh, but again, if you if you say, okay, no, that's you know, small fries, I don't want the five grand, I don't want the 10 grand, I want the quarter of a million dollar check for my sponsorship, then you can go after, of course, the Fortune 500 companies and target the sponsor, direct sponsorship director or director of marketing and, you know, keep calling and sending a direct mail piece and following up and following up for the larger amounts. And so that's, that's for, again, for that particular strategy. Another way I found to reach sponsorships is to do, uh, to reach sponsors, excuse me, is to do what's a co-op mailing. Basically what this is, is there's a way for you guys to send out 1,000 up to 10,000, you know, sales letters or brochures to get sponsors, and you never pay for that, not even postage. What you do is you find three other companies or businesses who have, um, you know, who want to reach the same clientele, and if you did the exercise earlier, we already have the list. These are the people who go before you, uh, what people need while they're doing business with you and after. So you already have that list. You call these people, or you write them, and you say, I'm doing a 5,000 piece mailing to, you know, companies that make a million to five million a year, whatever your, your, your criteria is. And you say, okay, we'd like to include your information your brochure, your sales letter, your flyer, to these, you know, five or ten thousand, and it's only going to cost you eight hundred dollars. First of all, there's no way they can reach five thousand people and get their message across in their hand, delivered on their desk, in front of their prime prospect, reach that many for eight hundred dollars. The postage alone is more than eight hundred dollars. 
you're going to provide the printing, you're going to provide the envelopes, you're going to provide all of that. So it should, it, most cases when I do this, I have a very high close rate when I approach potential companies to do like a co-op mailing because they see, wait a minute, I can reach thousands of people who are in my prime you know, market and it's only going to cost me $800. So again, my close rate is very, very high. Then what you do is you get three of those. And the reason you want three is because in the typical uh, standard envelope, you can get four sheets of paper in there. So if you get three people, three other companies, the fourth ride along will be information about you and your sponsorship offer. Remember, this, this mailing is paying for you to reach potential sponsors. So your flyer or your sales letter about your event and your sponsorship request is a free ride along with the other three. Again, it's all been subsidized. And all you do is simply take it to the printer. They'll print it up. They'll process everything. They'll mail it out. And you have just told 5,000 people about your, your event and you're looking for sponsors, you know, four or five different levels. And I can almost guarantee if you tell 5,000 companies who sell to the same exact audience that you sell to, again, if you tell 5,000 of them, this is a numbers game, you should be able to get one, two, three, and that's, and that's on a very, very, very low end to want to reach out to you and be a part of your event. You know, the key is when you're trying to get sponsorships is to keep your costs down, but more importantly, the time involved. Because you're busy running a business, you're putting out fires, you're taking care of clients, you're, you're training, you're leading the staff, you're in meetings, you're doing all of this stuff. So you really don't have time to follow up and follow through. Well, you just outsource the sense of mailing where all you do is hand, you know, is, is sit back and take the calls that come in because the mailing house or the printer is going to do all of the work. And so now you just sit back and answer the questions, you know, from the people who got the letter who want to be a part of the sponsorship. Another thing I do is I do, uh, I, I'll run ads in the newspaper, but I use Remnant. Uh, remnant advertising. This is for everybody listening. Whatever you want, if you do any type of newspaper advertising, always do remnant or unsold space. Basically what this is is just a fancy way of saying there's leftover space in a newspaper. Every time a magazine or newspaper comes out, there's ads that weren't sold, ad space, or there's an ad that didn't make it past the, you know, the eyeball, there's something objectionable or you know, offensive, and so the ad didn't make it. What a newspaper will do is turn around and sell that ad space to you for 80% off. So what that means is if it's a, you know, a $500 ad, I'm paying $80 for it. So I do this two way, for, for two things. One, I do it whenever I do an event. I'll get all of the newspapers in that area, and to promote my event, I'll... Um, you know, buy the remnant space. And I don't want you guys to think, okay, a discounted rate means a less than stellar ad. It doesn't. You have to turn the ad in. Um, that's, that's all based on the price. All you do is turn the ad in that you want to be published and ran. They run it. So it can look as professional. It can be designed however you want it to be designed. So that's the thing with that. And it runs in the newspaper. There's no special section that said, okay, this are, these are the cheap ads. These are the people who pay full rate. It all runs in together. The readers of that newspaper have no idea that you only pay $80 for a $500 ad. And the, and the, and the ad next to you, the guy probably paid the full rate. And so that's one way that I use the sponsorships too, is one, I'll run the ads just to promote my event. Then I'll run an ad you know, to, to attract sponsors, because a lot of business people, the first thing they do, they sit down and they read the newspaper and they flip through the newspaper. So you're going to uh, attract decision makers, people who are in position to help you out and be a sponsor. And I've seen ads as low as $12, you know. So, you, and, and, and again, you, 
this is also a way I'm going to give give you guys a lot of secrets. This is also how I decide where I'm going to do my next seminar. Most people do it backwards. I kind of reverse engineer when I do a seminar. I'll run an ad in three or four different cities. Um, remember, my average ad is only going to cost me twelve to eighty dollars. So I'll pick a few mid-tier cities, cities between maybe eighty-five thousand to two hundred thousand in population, and I'll run them, you know, different different parts of the country. I run two or three ads see what kind of response I get from the attendees, the registrations, see what kind of response I get from sponsors, and then I'll decide to go to that city. Most people say, okay, I'm going to do an event, I'm going to do it in this city, then they go get a hotel. Now they're on the line with the deposit, now they've uh, put that on the calendar, okay, now they have to scramble and try to get people to show up I, and, and advertise it. I reverse engineer it. I'll kind of let the market speak and decide, okay, where I need to go. Um, in some cases where I don't get any sponsor responses, I may not do the seminar, or I still may decide to do it. Some cases where I got more of a sponsorship reply than I got attendees, I'll still do it because they're going to put the money up for me to really roll it out and market it. So that's remnant advertising. Um, I just sliced off a, a little bit of it now to kind of put a, you know, a bug in your ear that's something you guys want to look for because it's a very, very affordable way for you to reach, promote your seminar for one, but also get in the, in the face of potential sponsors. Um, publicity is another way. If you guys can appear on radio, television, newspapers, magazines as an expert, while you're on the air, you can mention you know, you're also looking for sponsors. That's one of the you know, one of the most powerful ways I train my clients to do is I'll say, okay, you're live on the air. If it's a 30-minute radio interview or if it's a six-minute news segment, you're live. You can talk about, you know, what you're about on the show for, and then before you go off the air, say, you know, by the way, this event is, you know, talk about the event, and, you know, we have, you know, we're accepting sponsors. So that's another way to let the potential sponsors know that okay, this may be something that we want to be a part of because it reaches it reaches our audience. So um, I, I think, and then the more you you become more familiar, the more you master the few things that I've that I've gone over. You know, there's no you know magic pill, there's no magic button that's going to get you guys sponsorships. What it is is it's a very simple process, but you you execute it day in and day out. You stay committed to it, and you'll see that it'll it'll start to pay off when you when you when you do the direct mail letters, when you identify the, the right type of partners, when you incorporate remnant. And if all you have is fifteen bucks, you know what? Buy an ad. You know, it, depending on where you live, you can you can buy an ad, and 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 and, and only, th only thing you put up was fifteen dollars. You know, you can reach out and have some some companies subsidize a mailing to potential sponsors. You know, only thing you put up there was the time to call or email and reach out to the people and let them know, hey, you're doing a mailing. And again, your offer, they can sell and promote whatever they want to promote, but your flyer, your information is going to be selling sponsorship packages to an event you have coming up. Oh, and let me back up about the remnant. The downside to the remnant advertising is that you have to have a two-week window, meaning once you send them a check for the remnant space, they agree to run your ad within two weeks. If they don't run in it within two weeks, you get that money back. So the downside to remnant is you don't get to decide which day in that two-week period you want it to run. Whereas traditional advertising, you know, if it's a $500 rate card for an ad, you can tell them I want it to run on whichever day you choose. And in most cases, you can pick the section you want to be in. But you don't have that luxury when it's remnant. I found I'd rather pay $80 than $500. You know, most people, when they pick up a newspaper, you know, they, they touch every section anyway. You know, we all are trained to scan the headlines 
and so the headlines in your ad wants to you know you want it to be eye catching you want it to grab their attention but most people touch every section and they scan it so you know I've kind of I'd rather do that than to pay five hundred dollars just to be in a certain section and so that's something you guys want to test if you you know if you're very new to this um, with the in regards to uh, sponsorship and uh, let me see uh, the the other thing I'll share is I guess the most important thing is you know it's not an, an overnight thing where you're going to send out a letter and then you're going to get a check for ten thousand dollars for sponsorship if you're unknown but when you start to put these things together when you can you know kind of your your raise your profile as we say in, in PR where you're seen as the expert where the potential sponsors really can see the benefit of supporting you and you do what you say you're going to do you provide value again value for a potential sponsor is okay how do I stay in the attendee's memory and they don't forget about me that you know as soon as they walk out of there you, you tackle those problems you're going to see the sponsorship game become you know a lot lot easier but then it, it'll be profitable to you and, and the more events you'll you do you won't even think about doing an event and coming out of your own pocket I mean I do events now you know on my next one I got three sponsors um, you know already signed sealed and delivered so to speak um, you know some places have 50 sponsors I got a buddy of mine he wants 50 different sponsors I rather just have three big ones then have 50 you know but that you know to each his own there's no right or wrong way to do it um, so you know I practice what I preach I definitely think sponsorships is a way to go um, you know you I don't think there's any courses or, or classes so this is very good training and you'll be light years ahead of anybody else who's trying to do what you're doing even if they're doing the same type of event in the same city they're putting up their money and most are experts in what they do they aren't experts in marketing so if you're doing you know if you're in the financial services industry you know they're, and they're actually good people to to partner with to get sponsors um, because one they like the small business clientele especially between a million and five million dollars uh, and and you know I don't I don't know how many people listening to this are actually you know where I live so I don't mind kind of telling you some of the people that I, that I deal with I love um, you know working with with John Hancock Raymond James Edward Jones um, who's who, who's ever financial does financial planning or financial advisors you know from big well-known companies to the small independent you know office you know downtown those are perfect for you if you're going to be doing seminars and in, in, in boot camps targeting small business owners because that's who they want to reach and the reason it's a good marriage between the two is one not only is that their sweet spot but it's very hard for them to get somebody who's making two to five million dollars a year to take time out of their their day to go and sit at a two-hour estate planning two-hour retirement two-hour investment strategy seminar so they and these guys spend a lot of money doing newspapers and you hear them all over on the radio trying to get you know people like you and I to sit for two hours on retirement and finances it's very hard but if you can get 50 to 100 people to come into a social media or internet marketing or a PPC or a online advertising um, event you can go to the financial planner and say hey you know I'm doing an event I already have X amount of people or I'm expecting X amount of people their attendance is going to go up because those are the same very same people they are trying to reach and you're going to give them access to the same people again that most of these these financial services and insurance agencies are another good one um, you know there's there's their their advertising budgets are I mean are huge I mean they're all over radio and television so they're already writing checks for marketing most of it isn't working so when you say I've got a bunch of people all in one room I'll even give you 
five, ten minutes to speak or to you know talk about what you what you do, that's another good selling point to get sponsors, especially on the higher higher end packages. They say, you know what, I'll give you 15, 20 minutes on stage. They love that. They definitely love that. And so, you know, you can say, you know, it's a five thousand dollar sponsorship package included is, you know, A, B, C, all of the things you and benefits you you're, you're willing to give, and then throw in you're also going to get 20 minutes on stage. They're going to love that because now they can pick up new business. Now they know they're in front of ideal clients who have just heard and seen you know seen them speak, who are going to come up to them after the event, after I mean after you know after the event or after they speak, to want to know more, or get more information, or set an appointment, and. Um, and that's that's primarily who I mean I, I try to diversify with my uh, with the type of sponsors I get but primarily I deal with the financial advisory or insurance industry uh, to get them to sponsor my event but it's also good to you know to, to have other people involved just so you know all your eggs are in one basket and then they're gonna not gonna want to compete so if I have one you know, big name Fortune 500 financial advisor, um, you know, sponsor. I'm not going to have their competitor sponsor the same event. They won't, you know, won't go for that. But you can have, a, you know, other sponsors that aren't their competition. So that, that would be my advice there. And I'd say go after the, you know, the financial advisors in your area uh, or insurance agencies because they're already spending the money. They want to reach the same people you're already putting in one room. Give them a few minutes on stage, and it should be very simple for you, you know, to get a two thousand to a five thousand dollar check. Then, if you get four or five of those, you know, you got twenty grand. I, I, I assume you guys aren't at the Tony Robbins level yet. I could be wrong. I don't know, you know, Charles' audience. I could be wrong, but I assume you aren't on the Tony Robbins level yet, where every event you put on is a minimum quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, go, I'll go out on a limb and say you guys, you know, if if, if you get a check for twenty thousand dollars, I think you guys, you know, you, you'll be okay. You'll you'll put most of that in your pocket. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So so like I said, I've been blessed to do. Uh, well, there's Les Brown done stuff for him. Um, Tony Robbins, Nightingale Conant, uh, Jay Abraham, Chet Holmes when he was was alive. Um, let me see the secret. Laura Langmeyer. I mean, the list goes on and on. And these guys do, you know, millions a year, and a good chunk of that is they do live events. So I can, un you know, again, firsthand knowing what it takes to put on something that huge. I don't even do that. I mean, I do very, very simple events. You know, I did one event. My, I got a buddy of mine who's a speaker, and I had him come to the event, and it was, uh, it was 12 people. And I actually got this from John Carlton. I don't know if you guys know him. I was, yeah, yeah, we all heard John Carlton, huh? Okay, yeah, see, he was, he was another client I work with. And he did an event here in Chicago, and it was $2,500 a person. It was one day. It was, I believe, 8 in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. It was $2,500 a person. There were five people there, you know, not counting John and his partner Stan. So there were five people, you know, times 2,500, you know, you do the math, made about 12 grand, whatever that is. Um, so but what, what I took, a, and that's just who, who paid to be there in, in his, um, uh, what are they, hot seat, and, and in his critiques and all of the stuff that he teaches. That's what they paid for one day. I don't know if he had upsells. I don't know if they followed up after the event and pitched something else, a home study course. You know, I don't know all that stuff, but knowing him, he probably turned the average twenty-five hundred dollars sale into five or six thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Throw at that. So, but my whole point is, I did the same thing in the suburbs. Um, he was at the Hard Rock downtown Chicago. Again, the, the the bigger the name, the Trump Towers and the and the Omnis and the Ritz. <laughs> when you guys start doing it in these these bigger uh, hotels, I'm going to say casinos, because a lot of my clients do stuff in Vegas, um, the more they charge for the meeting space in the meeting room, 
and if the staff has to bring you water, they're billing you for that. So I don't know how much he made because, again, he was at a hotel downtown Chicago. None of those are cheap. So what I do is I do mine out in the suburbs. You know, I don't I don't need to be at the Hard Rock or, the, or you know, some. <laughs> I'll just take a, a Ramada works, right. a American works. <laughs> you know, it, it works. And, and, again, to get to my point, I did the same event where only 12 people showed up. And I had my friend come in, a buddy of mine who speaks, and then he looked, and he was like, okay. Because he, he, he's been with me for a while, so he, he knows the big events. He knows when it, I do stuff, there's 200 people there, there's 800 people here. But this one was kind of set up, you know, around the, the, the meeting table, a boardroom type setting. So he's like, oh, okay, this is, this is kind of different. You know, the 12 people here, you know, I'm used to being on stage in front of a couple hundred people. So anyway, he speaks. It was a one-day event. Um, about a week later, he, you know, we were talking, and he said, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, it was great that you had me there, and I sold a couple CDs, and, you know, I had a nice time, met some new people, and, and they liked, you know, my material. He's like, I'm curious, just, you know, how'd you make out? Because I know it wasn't, you know, that many people there. I said, um, that group, I probably made close to $10,000 from that. He's like, wait a minute. There were 12 people there. Two of the people were me and you. So how did you, <laughs> <laughs> so how did you, like, I didn't see you do a whole lot of stuff. I mean, you talked, you didn't, I mean, you had a couple of people bought the CDs, but I was selling CDs. For ten dollars, he was like, "How did you turn this in?" I was like, "Okay, well, there's the registration they paid one to be there. Then um, I offered services. I mean, they're there to learn. So you know, they want to learn marketing because this was a marketing um, the training I did, and I packaged you know a fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred dollar marketing package. And then for the people who that was kind of out of their range, I took all of my CDs." All of my videos, my uh, some of my other trainings, the audio trainings, downloaded them, and put together a home study course. You know that was 497. So you know looks can be deceiving when you see a small crowd, but you got to understand if you're pulling people in of like mind who want to learn a particular topic, they have an interest in that topic, especially if they paid. Um, you know sometimes the free events may not convert. You know, as, as much as if they paid, even something small. But that's what I did. I just, you know, understood that, okay, they may be small, but I do know how to market. I do know how to follow up. I do know how to add value. So, you know, I did the same thing John Carlton. And I'm thinking, had I not went to that John Carlton event and saw with my own eyes, he had five people there, I probably wouldn't have had the courage or the guts to do something small because I'm, we are conditioned, you know, you want to, large numbers of people and you want this big old thing and you don't need that you can do one event a month with just 10 people and if you understand value and packaging and you get sponsorships one event a month uh, that's that 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 alone is six figures that's not you adding anything else to it but I think most people were blinded by you know we want to start off with something big and it's, you know, it's not worthwhile if it's small. You know, I got a different way of thinking with that. I don't care if an event is huge. I don't care if it's small. When you have certain skills, you know how to make them work for you. So I, th I think as far as the, the sponsorships, unless there's particular questions, um, you know, I've covered everything in, in my notes. Um, you know, the main thing, and I'll kind of recap here, the main thing is the mindset. Once you establish the mindset that you can get a sponsorship, um, there are companies out there looking to reach the same audience that you reach, and they'll give you a check again if you if you're not greedy or you're content with a thousand here, two thousand here, and, and believe me, they add up. Um, you can get more than enough sponsors. So just the mindset one one, and then two, remembering the formula on how to find the best type of sponsor and many of the companies you go after you're going to not they're not going to be household names so if you guys do the exercise and you see okay I need you know here are the best potential sponsors and you go through the phone book or you google that they're not going to be the big um, you know household names and then back to my example 
um, like to answer the third part of that of, of, of how do you find potential sponsors. When someone leaves my business and goes somewhere else, I understand that they're in business. So they're going to have to, they're going to have a banking account. They're going to have to have an account. So I would go to accountants, you know, I would look up accountants in the phone book or on Google, and 80% of those that show up, you know, you, you never heard of them. You know, of course, you're going to have your H&R blocks, and you're going to have your, you know, your Arthur Andersons, if they still exist. You're going to have, you know, the uh, Liberty, you're going to have the big chains, but then you're going to have dozens of the mom and pop type accountants that you never heard of, but they're pretty well represented in just about every, you know, every town. So those want to be key sponsors for you. You know, you can get some of those guys to fork over a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars because you're going to have four hundred small business owners. You know, in any event, that benefits them. So don't rule out, you know, J and K tax services because you've never heard of them. You know, uh, those are actually good good prospects. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, I. I uh... I have to. I'll, I'll speak for. I'll speak for myself, and I'm pretty sure you, you know the the uh, the question board is kind of lit up here, uh, Robert. So um, I think that you really kind of touched a touched a nerve here. And um, one thing um, that that uh, I ask, and I guess I'll start the I'll start the questions off is, um, you talked a little bit about that business model. Um, and I'm glad that you touched on that, where you, in effect, are are going to give away a seat in your in your in your in your you know in your event. But does it make sense, you know, to uh, you know to give away those seats in order to get registrations, and then go to the sponsor, or is that even you know is that is that a backwards way of kind of looking at the you know, at the process. Okay. Well, what <clears throat> what was your your, your question again? Was it back? Well, okay. Does it make sense to give away seats at your event? And in fact, make the to 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 price the event low, and then to get the numbers that would facilitate you getting a sponsor, or would you would you kind of leave it at you know what you think the right rate is, even if you had lower numbers at your event? You know, which would facilitate getting more sponsors. Right. That would depend, and I, and I learned this from uh, another amazing big-time speaker, uh, Bill Walsh. Um, his 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 philosophy, which which I've adopted since I you know was uh, able to work with him, was the numbers don't matter as much as the audience. And what he said was. There was a bank in Chicago who put up, a, I want to say, I think it was a thirty thousand dollar sponsor sponsorship they gave um, to someone he knows, and there were twelve people in the room, but there were twelve people who were, I want to say, in the twenty-five to fifty million dollar net worth range, mm -hmm. and you know that's and in and in Chicago, I mean, we all know by the zip codes the the wealthy. Um, uh, suburbs of Chicago. Sure, that, yeah. that's public record. You know where all the, the the Chicago Bears and the Chicago Bulls and the pro athletes and the superstar entrepreneurs and the CEOs of these you know the, the Fortune 500 companies. We know which suburbs they live in. Right, that's right. So yeah. his his thing was he got together twelve of these people in that price range, and and this bank saw that and was like, okay, there's only twelve people, but the potential they had with their net worth, when you add all of that up, it was worth them to try to get, you know, as many as they could. But even if just one decided to do business with them, you know, that was access that they right, didn't right, have. right. So to answer your question, um, if you I, and I understand too, and I kind of touched on it, the free events you because it's free, you have more people, you have more, you know, most are going to be tire kickers. But you can sell that to a potential sponsor, like, hey, there's going to be 250 people here. They'll look at that, and you may get some with that. The more seasoned people in business, 
are going to know, okay, but if they aren't really paying, you know, they aren't paying as much attention, they aren't as good a prospect as if, even if you just charge $97 for something. My my lowest event that I that I do that that's mine and not something I'm a part of is ninety seven dollars. I've just found from testing that's enough of an investment where um, you know they pay attention, but it's not something they got to go discuss with their wife and they got to refinance and they got to do all this other stuff. They got I mean if they're in business and they're serious and it's something they want to learn, they can put their finger on a hundred dollars. You know so. That's why I typically um, stay around. And as far as sponsors, you know, I, again, it, 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 goes, it comes down to if it's the right audience, yeah, I might only have 60 people in the room, but you know what, these 60 people make a million and a half dollars a year, and they are currently buying what it is you sell. That's what I tell, you know, that's the, the what, what I explain to the, to the potential sponsor, is so they don't focus so much. You know what, there's only 60. But they paid one to be here, so they're going to be more attentive. They're going to be interested because they paid money. And so now when the sponsors come in, they're not dealing with a whole bunch of tire kickers. And, and I think we're the, we're the same way. I mean, would you rather have 500 people in a room? It's a free event, but it's 500 people, and 99.99% walk out of there and don't, don't do anything. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Or 60, but then you get 20% of them to do business with you after it's over. Right. Yep. Yep. No, I, I, I got you. No, it's a good, uh, great point. Great point. Okay, good. Um, let me see. Boy, let me, uh, a lot of questions here. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, well, one person going to ask where they can get a hold of you after the, or where they can get a hold of some of your stuff. I'll leave that to the end. You can talk about that. And uh, let's see, next question. Okay, talking about regional corporate sponsors. What do these regional corporate sponsors or directors of marketing ask for in terms of your credibility package to help them make a decision? Okay, the, the, the first thing they're going to want to do, or you're going to want to do, if, if they don't know you, is kind of put yourself in their shoes. I give you $2,500, and then you take off, and there's no event. So that I'd say the the biggest thing is the scam factor, and so once you can deal with that, and I mean I'm a ways you can do that. I mean, however long you've been in business, you let them know I've, I've been in business, you know, ten years or twenty years or five years. You can check with the Better Business Bureau. You can you know hear some of my credentials. If you have had some some PRs publicity, you can bring uh, articles with you. You can mail articles. Um, you know, there's there's there, you can do that. You can, because again, the biggest thing is them giving you a check and then you splitting and, and taking off with, with their money. So if they trust you, and I, and I would say with the regional, if you, a face-to-face -face meeting is more powerful than you sending a letter if you don't already have a rapport, if they don't know you. Um, because if, they're, if you're local and then they're, you know, they're local, and then they can put a face with the name. You can go in. You can invite them to lunch. You can, you know, send them a direct mail letter, um, and then you follow up. If you can do that, then there's less chance of them thinking, okay, this guy's fly by night. He's going to take off. Um, another thing you can do, kind of to sneak in the back door, is to write up your own press release, and then then do the remnant um, route where it's published in the in the local newspaper. That gives you credibility because we, we, we live in a culture where we believe whatever we, for the most part, hear on the news or see or read, it must be true. They wrote yeah. about it. Yep. <laughs> so, so you <laughs> use that to your advantage. You know, you know spend $25 and, and get a, a, an article published about you. You know, that will add to your, to your credibility. And then don't go, you know, for the moon on your, on your first, you know, sponsorship. You know, let the trust build. Say, okay. You know, would you would you do a five hundred dollars sponsorship level? And here's all the things you're going to do. Deliver on that, and then the next event, ask for fifteen hundred. Then the next event, you can, you can do that. You don't have to ask for five thousand dollars right out of the gate when they don't know you, they've never done business with you, they've never heard of you. That might be a tough sell if you don't already have the numbers. If you go to them and say, we already got two thousand people signed up, um, you know, you know, uh, here's everything you're going to get. Here's what the event's about. 
you know, that gives you more leverage than if you're trying to get an event together and then you need want somebody to give you a sponsorship check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that's good. That's excellent. Um, I got a question here. Robert, uh, have you ever seen a webinar or webinar series sponsored uh, by company? Yeah, webinars are, are sponsored. They, they typically um, work the same way, um, whereas, um, the, you know, their, their banner, their logo, their men, they're going to be mentioned even in the emails promoting the webinars. It'll say, okay, this web, webinar is presented or sponsored by American Express or right. whoever it is. So, again, the more mentions you can do with the webinar, I will tell you, it's more work and it's more costly for a, a live event, but nothing can take the place of you being in front of somebody. You can shake their hand. They can see you. You can see them. You know, you're face-to-face. -face. So if I had to choose, you know, if I had to choose, I would say a live event is more powerful. But, do you know, due to time and other restrictions, you know, and in our culture now with technology, webinars are, are becoming more and more popular um, you know you can do those as well it just, it, it just kind of each his own if you really don't want to travel then webinars are the way to go um, you know um, you know like I said if you if you don't want to travel and have it automated you know less work for you then webinars are the only way to go but if you're really looking to add impact and value and more money then you want to incorporate some live events with your webinar mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So some some of these guys are probably going to be doing it for an actual client, and uh, and and so you know if they would go and they would actually be putting on a webinar, let's say for an interior designer or somebody like that, then they would have that webinar. This you know is sponsored by I don't know you know uh, Benjamin Moore Paint or that kind of thing, and uh, it would just be their name on most of the stuff for the webinar. Do I understand that right? Right, right, right. And and, I, and I'm glad you brought up that example because, again, most of most of my examples are for me or, you know, my B2B clients. But my I have a, um, a marriage counselor on the East Coast, and she does marriage counseling events. And so for her sponsorship, again, I ask myself the same questions, okay? Before somebody comes to a marriage counselor, what do they need? Well, first of all, they need to be married or planning to get married. So that, <laughs> that was that was real easy. So, so it's funny you laugh at it. It's just like that's so simple. Um, so then you go to ministers and pastors and counselors and the, and, and the court. You know, you look at all the different ways people get married. You can, you know, look at all the, the things that uh, dry cleaners, people who clean wedding dresses. You know, we came up with a lot of different types of lists. And so we would go to those people. And so you would do the same thing, but instead of a live event, you would say, you know, it's, it's an online training, it's a webinar, you know, your, your, your logo or your company, your website is going to be mentioned, you know, this many pages. When they click here, there's a, you know, you just squeeze page, they get, you know, there's going to be emails going to 10,000 people. You just let them sell them on all the benefits they're going to get. But it's just going to be online, and then you sell the benefits of a webinar. I mean, it can be accessed at a later date. If you want to rehear something over again, you can hear it over again. So you, you sell them on the benefits of that. Um, and then what I do is I still upsell them to a live event. Because if you have a webinar, and let's say you get, you know, 80 people on there, okay, well, you say we're going to do, you know, a one-day event or two-day or whatever, and that could be one of your upsells at the end, where if you really liked what we did here, what we cover here with interior design or marriage, you're really going to love an intimate, and again, go back to where maybe, maybe only 10 or 12 people show up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but you do that at a local hotel. And if you say, well, I'm, I'm cheap. I don't want to do it at a hotel. Well, you find a restaurant. I learned that from Bill Walsh. He was like, <laughs> sometimes, he was like, sometimes, I mean, I think he was doing an event and the, um, the hotel didn't reserve his room. They Look it out to somebody else. So as the people came in, it was like they'd been a change of plans. They put up like a little sign, and they went over to the Panera Bread, wherever it was, and he saved four hundred and fifty dollars because there's a restaurant in the in the area over there where they just sat in tables, and he made that work for him. So um, you know, you can when you if you upsell a webinar, it doesn't have to be something really really huge. So, you know, small intimate settings can work. 
Okay. No, that's that's great. That's great. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, do these corp? Let me see. Do these corporate sponsors ask for some kind of ROI proof or some kind of statement? I think you kind of answered this to prove to them that their monies were spent on the event. Do they? Do they? Do they ask for proof after the event that the money was was spent for ROI? Right, sure, and, and again, depending on how savvy the marketer is or the person you approach is, you're really not going to get these questions because you understand marketing, you understand measurement, you understand testing. A lot of these business owners don't. That's why they do radio and they do television, and it's not direct response. Mm -hmm. It's all image building because if they really understand direct response, they they want to measure everything. So my, I guess my question answer around uh, kind of around the way is one: don't bring it up. Make wait for them to bring it up. <laughs> I mean, why 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 create an objection when you don't have to? Right. Yeah. Um, but, if, but, but, but if it does come up, then there's certain guarantees. You say, okay, they're going to be you know, X amount of people there and everyone is going to get, um, you know, your flyer. They're going to get your handout. They're going to get, um, you know, if you're providing a free demo or a, a book, whatever it is that the sponsor wants to provide or have the people do, your guarantee and your commitment is, okay, all of these people are going to get it. Now, we have no control over whether they do it. We, and I had this happen, too. I had a sponsor for an event in New York. And... His was a free hourly, he's a business consultant. His was a free hourly consultation. And, you know, he, after, you know, he, he paid me, did, you know, we, we got the flyers there and everybody got one. And, you know, he didn't get the number of people he thought he would get for the consultation. So what I did was, I, you know, I got events happening all the time. So we did another event in L.A. and in Chicago, and we didn't charge him for those. So you know, you know, you want to you know try to meet a client halfway uh, or a sponsor where you can, um, but you know sometimes that happens. Sometimes they don't get what they thought they're going to get. Same thing if you buy an ad in the newspaper. That doesn't mean somebody's going to buy from you or go to your store or do what you right, want. Right, right. That's right. You know, so you know you kind of play it by ear. You know, you don't want to obviously you don't want to be ripped off, but at the same time they do want to see some type of return on the on the money they gave you. So I would just say your setup needs to be, okay, we're going to make sure everybody knows this about what you're doing. They know you or they get this. And this is when I work with the client to create some type of uh, giveaway or a, a, a takeaway where the attendees actually have something from the client mm -hmm. that they can take because they may not get around to it that day or the next day. Right, and that was a question I, I had about the about the the, the giveaway, um, and and I understand that that they actually buy and put together the giveaway, or is that something that in some cases that I do for the for the client, or how how does that how does that tend to work? Right, the less work you make a client do, the more sponsorships you're going to get, and the reason being is just human nature; they already do another thing. You know, they're doing other things. Um, they're busy. So the less work that I require you to do, the more likely you're going to, you know, do a deal or do business with me because I'm not, I'm not making you do anything extra than what you're already doing. Right. So if it, if it means creating a flyer or designing a piece, you know, you know, I'll do that. You know, you can outsource that. You can go to Fiverr and pay somebody five bucks to do stuff to design. And, you, you know, you hire two or three of them and choose the best one. And you spend $15 and they did it. And your client doesn't even know that. Um, or, or anything else, you know, where you can do most of the work, you'll be better off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. Very good. Um, okay. Uh, oh, boy. Um, Robert, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're past an hour, but, and I've still got more questions. I don't know if you've got a little more time or not. Oh, sure, sure. I block, actually blocked off two hours. I wasn't sure. Oh, fantastic. Um, okay, good, good, good. Well, we, we're, we're, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna just kind of pin you, pin you to your seat here for a second and, uh, and, and, uh, get some more of these questions in. Um, for corporate subsidized mailings, is it easier to deal with regional, uh, 
regional since it directly impacts their regional sales target numbers which is a which is a stronger which is a stronger appeal to their self interest so in other words um, is it easier to deal with regional or corporate simply be, regional than corporate simply because the the impact is closer to what they're they're doing every day right that's a that's an excellent question and and it, it feeds into the numbers they want to report I like to do that because it, it cuts down on the waiting time and the, again, the red tape. And again, the larger these companies are, the more bureaucracy, the more red tape, the more people have to approve, the more it gets moved up and signed, up, signed off on, then it's more likely to be put on the back burner. Again, if, if, if you're Tony Robbins or you know Zig Ziglar or somebody like that, you don't have these issues. But when you're not at that level, it's very easy even for me to have something that you know I'm working on get tossed out or pushed to the back burner with these larger companies. So when I found out I can go, like for instance, the FedEx um, company, you still can use FedEx as a sponsor. If FedEx writes you a check, but it's only the Northern Illinois hub or the you know Southwest Arizona hub, doesn't matter, it's still FedEx. So you can say this event was sponsored by FedEx. And so I like the regional because it's easy to get to the general manager, it's easy to get to the plant manager um, versus trying to get to the CEO of, uh, or the, the CMO at, at these companies uh, corporately. So that's why I like it. I guess another selling point would be, you know, it could help their numbers and what they report, but the main reason I started using it was because I'm kind of impatient, I'm still working on it. You know, if I can get 5,000 in 90 days versus trying to get 20,000, but I got to wait three years and I may or may not get it, I'll just get the $5,000 checks all day long. Right. Then you get to the point where you kind of get lazy because you have a formula that worked, um, and then you have people that you know and that you just go to, you know, on a regular basis when you do these events. Um, so, like I said, you can, you can, you can, maybe you can do them both. Maybe you can split your time from the low-hanging fruit, the regional, you know, sales offices. And then part of that time, you know, you go for the big way. Right. Yeah. So that. So that. That was. Uh, and and now I'm, I'm glad uh, James asked that question. The. Uh, so so regional, can eventually lead to, lead to corporate. So w once you once you get the regional, can that lead to corporate? It 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 can. Uh, once one, you're already in the door, and then two, you have someone on your side who can even maybe make make the call for you or you write a letter and you have them sign it and then they can fax or send an in-house memo to the person in charge of the um, you know the, the the corporate side of that and you can also grow region to region now this is one of the things I did too was again the one approach is nationally the other approach is okay you go from regional office to regional office and you're still expanding so for the FedEx example because I'm in Northern Illinois, you know, obviously that's where I started, but Northern Illinois is right on the border of Southern Wisconsin. So now you move up to Southern Wisconsin and their regional, uh, you know, their local office or regional office. Then you move over, you know, if you want to go east in Indiana or you want to go west in Iowa, you can grow and add region to region. And it's almost like, you, I mean, it, it's, it's almost like you're growing nationally, but you're doing region by region, if that makes sense, instead of starting out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see. Um, how close to the newspaper deadline do you approach the newspaper for remnant ad spaces? So I guess, the, that, I, I guess James, do you mean the, the deadline for your event or are you talking about the deadline for the newspaper I can okay well, he's talking about the deadline for the newspaper Robert okay well this is ongoing every every newspaper has um, they're gonna have unsold space nobody sells 100 percent of their space every day they come out and I can and I can send you guys my list um, for 2012 you know, you send me an email, and I guess I'll get that out later, hopefully. Um, and and you can, you know, just email me, and I'll send you, you know, this is the same rate sheet I use. And so the deadline is the only requirement they have 
is your ad has to run within a two-week window. So if your event is four weeks from now, let's say you're doing an event and it's, you know, in, at the end of November, you have time to do it because it'll run within two weeks of your, you know, it'll run within two weeks. And yet when your ad runs, you know, your event is still one or two weeks away. I wouldn't do remnant if your event was next week because the newspaper has a two-week window. They may right. publish it after your event. So that, the only thing they're going to commit to is they'll run it within two weeks. So if your event is in is next week, sure, there's a chance they may run it before, but there's also a chance they may run it after your event. So like I said, if you have at least a month before your event or four weeks out, you can do remnant. And it's always ongoing, so you can send them, you can contact a, a, a newspaper, get them your ad, and they'll have it, and then let them know, you know, when when you want them to run run it. You don't have to kind of, you know, play uh, by ear on if they have remnant. They always have remnant. You know, okay. that's the whole, you know. Yeah, it's just ongoing. Okay. Um, all right. So, so I I want to I want to come back to the um, you, you talked about sending the co-op message. And one of the questions is, uh, the 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 folks who are going to be in that mailing with you, are they also requesting sponsorship? Is that their, is that what their insert is requesting also? What what are they are what are they trying to accomplish? No, they can they can promote whatever they want to promote. Um, the last co-op I did in May, we had a, a travel agency. We had um, I want to say I think American Express was in there, their local office, and also a jeweler. And then you had my my uh, sponsorship information. So no, they can promote whatever they want. It just has to be one page. You know, the travel agency, the guy had a um, a discount on his travel services. I think the uh, the jeweler had Rolexes or something he was he was selling. So his ad kind of tailored to to that. So they're, they're, they're not promoting or trying to get sponsorship. Okay. All right. Okay. That makes sense. And makes you don't want them doing that anyway because then they're competing with you. Right. That's what I, okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> that was what I was kind of thinking about. Okay. Um, okay. Um, or it's okay. So it looks like we, you, you, uh, you answered that one. Um, okay. I think you answered the question about the remnant. So, okay. Um, how do you raise your event profile to corporate sponsors if you are just starting out? I think you, I think you answered that, but maybe if you want to bullet point that, uh, Robert. Okay, you, the way you raise your profile, no matter what it is you're doing, in your, in your everyday business and a new product you want to launch with seminars, the formula is the same. You want to have... Uh, credibility and there's certain things that give you credibility one is you know publicity or public relations there's one thing for you to say you know you're you're great and, and, and you can do this is another thing if Oprah says it or the Chicago Tribune says right, it, or, right, your, yeah. or your local newspaper says it so um, PR does it referrals endorsements do it a lot of times the, the stages that I've been blessed to speak on was nothing about me getting PR, had nothing to do with me running Remnant. It was the right person, gave the right introduction, and they went off the strength of who that person was. That's how I got on Tony's Robbins stage, is because there was somebody he knew or respected to partner with, said, okay, you're, you're talking business, you got something on PR and publicity, okay, well, I got a guy that's gonna come in and, and speak. That People try for years to try to get on those stages and never get it. So um, referrals are great, endorsements, PR, um, another thing you can do if, if you can't or don't want to do any of those things is you can use joint ventures and what you want to do is find other people you can partner with to put on the seminar and all of you guys will be speakers. You know, it's very common in the speaking industry so if you know four or five other internet marketers or direct marketers or you know anybody that does with business growth and then you, you market to each other's list. Um, so now you have massive database because everybody's marketing to their list for this one seminar. Now you have numbers you can go to a sponsor because if you don't have the name recognition or the, the proven track record, 
they're going to want to see numbers. They're going to want to know, okay, well, this is something we need to be part of because they're going to have 500 people there. They're going to have 1,000 people of our exact profile there. Or if it's only going to be 10 people, like the example I gave earlier, the 10 people where they got a $100 million net worth, you have to make it so that it makes the most sense and is most beneficial, beneficial to the sponsor. And so if you don't have time or the ability to raise your profile, then you pull your resources together and the numbers will raise the profile because you're going to have a thousand people there. If you don't have the numbers, then you want to have the right targeted person. Um, and again, that's the example of the people with the high net worth, but there are only like you know 12 people there. That'll get the attention of, a, of the right sponsor uh, if it's the right ideal person and they can you know see benefit in that. Okay. All right. Got it. Got it. No, that's powerful. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so it's possible now. You talked about uh, kind of reverse engineering um, a seminar in another city. Now, um, if you're not known in a particular city, right? So I guess you'd have to you'd have to kind of go there. You have to be able to to say that you you had registrations, and then and then to be able to approach the sponsors there. Um, but can you do that outside, effectively outside of your local area? Yeah, you can you can call sponsors in that city and say you're doing an event uh, in in two months, or three months, six months, whatever you're doing an event in their city, um, and then you you go into more about the event. Um, the only seminars. Well, you, I mean, let me see. I can have phrase that you have, like what I call like celebrity or guru type seminars, where typically their their pool is on the strength of their name. I, I, I think of the rich dad poor dad seminars. Mm -hmm. I think of Dean Graziosi, you know, no money down and all this stuff, because they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on advertising, and they have the name recognition. You can say, you know, I hear them on the radio every spring and fall. Rich dad, you know, poor dad seminar coming here. Um, that's because they have the, you know, the, the money to do it. If you don't have the money to kind of create a buzz, then when you approach um, a potential seminar uh, sponsor, you have to sell them on the fact that they're going to be in front of their targeted, ideal, laser um, audience or, or um, type of customer. And there's no, you know, I don't know, you know, a better way of saying that. But if if you can tell me um, exactly who's going to be there, which is which is more important than how many people are going to be there, because again, you can do all the free events with hundreds of people all day long, but then the the savvy business person is going to say, okay, they were there because it was free. You know, nobody's going to call me after that. But you know, if they're paying a little bit, then they're paying a little bit more attention. So when you when you're in that coming from that you know that angle it really is the audience the ideal target person the attendee not so much numbers all the time but it doesn't hurt if you can say hey we're going to have you know expecting 400 people to be there i'm doing an event in your city we're expecting 400 people to be there um you know you're going to have to leave with the numbers if you don't have the numbers then it better be, you know, somebody they're trying to get in front of, but they can't doing what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, because, like I said, it's tricky. There's no one size fits all, but it can be done. You know, I've seen it done. Um, and then you just figure out how do you want to do it. I actually like, I mean, I like large events, but I also like, you know, I mean, I like a small 10, 15 people. You know, everybody's in there doing 2 or $3 million a year because there's not a lot of distractions, not a lot going on. You have the floor, you have the ultimate leverage and positioning, they're listening to you, you're teaching, you know they have the resources to hire you when it's over. And, you know, I can do those all day long. So don't get stuck in, okay, well, I want a sponsorship to help me get 200 people. You know, you say, you know, I have 20 people committed to being here, they each pay X amount of dollars. Here's the demographics. Um, you know, using the um, business example, again, the sweet spot is anywhere between one and five million dollars a year. But 
you know, whatever your 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 uh, focus or topic is, identify the cream of the crop within that niche, and then you get those people there, or tell the sponsor, here are the people we're going to be attracting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that's good. That's good. Um, now, um, let's see, one question. Uh, do, do corporate sponsors typically allocate their, their sponsorship dollars out of their advertising and market budget, marketing budgets, or is sponsorship its own budget? That that depends. There there are some. Um, if you're talking like you know big Fortune 500 companies, you know they'll have so much dedicated to sponsorships. And then with the recession uh, or with the, the economy the last few years, the sponsorships have, have started to pass um, typical advertising because they just weren't getting the the results. And advertising was expensive, so they were looking for things to do that related. Um, and, and better impact their their potential customers, so they want the sponsorship. That's only the big companies. If you guys approach sponsors that are just you know small and mid-sized business business owners, um, they typically don't have a separate advertising budget. This for this this. They say, okay, here's what I have, and in some cases, if it's a sweet enough deal or if it's a um, something that's really of great value, they'll just spend them. Like I said, a lot of small business owners advertise. They don't even have an advertising budget. The, the, the newspaper rep came in, the Yellow Pages rep came in, or whoever, and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. You can reach this amount of people. It's X amount of dollars. And then they try it. And so you're dealing with a lot of those people. Because remember, the average person you're going to go to, they're in business. They, they run their business. They're not marketing experts. They're not advertising experts. They know their business. So they, and that's the reason the, these uh, ad reps throw out the number of viewers and listeners and all this other stuff. So you kind of have to use that approach because that's what they understand. But then you say, you know, it's more highly targeted. But again, to answer your question, the, the people that I go after, even my clients, we're not going after the Fortune 500 companies to get them to sponsor our business. I mean, there's so much lower hanging fruit, and it'll accomplish the same thing. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's very good. Very good. Um, uh, okay. I think you sort of answered that one. Uh, and let me see. Um, okay. Uh, a good question here by James. James is gonna kind of help us sum it up. He says, "Okay, other than revenues from admission uh, or tickets, table." table rush or product sales, renting the attendee list, and corporate sponsors, are there any other profit centers that we can extract from an event? Well, that's a great question. Well, James, I think you covered it all, but maybe there's more we can do. Yeah, there's your, your services. There's, um, yeah, like if you do consulting, if you do coaching, you can you can offer that. Obviously, the, the, the products, you can have. Um, speakers pay who want to be a part of your event. You can um, take other people's um, products who can't attend the event, uh, but give them a booth and, and take a percentage of what they sell, or they can pay you for the right to you know have their books or their products sold at your event, um, along with the renting of the names, um, you know the sponsorships. You know they, they're they're probably and I just gave you guys just kind of off the top of my head, but there's a kind of like a checklist that whenever we do these events, um, you know, it's kind of like when you when you fly a plane and the pilot is he's going off the checklist and we check this. We we do the same thing with the seminars. So I'll have a list of okay, here's how we can maximize this. Here's the make sure you you know put the list out um, for the list broker make sure we approach that you know so we'll have a check checklist so there are about 10 11 ways that most people you know unless you've been around the seminar industry you know behind the scenes not so much being an attendee but unless you you know the kind of the person the promoter putting this on you know I'm sure there's some ways that that, that you haven't thought of um, just like any industry unless you're really in it doing it every day you know they're going to be things that you miss but if you stick to what you just know what was that just was that James that just asked him? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's he's already ahead of ninety five percent of the people who are speakers or who are in the seminar industry. He's ahead. Just what he got from your call, 
this call today, he's ahead of 95 or the other percent of other people doing this because, again, their focus on how many people can I get in, in, put in the seat and their focus on registration. Then they may say, well, how many books can I sell or how many products can I sell to these people who are in this room? That's typically where they, where they stop. Wow. Okay, man. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I think uh, I, I think I have to speak on behalf of everybody. Um, I'm not sure if thank you quite covers it, but I mean, I think you really um, gave us some solid information. And I'm I'm going to be honest, you know, even doing, you know, a radio show here in the city, um, I, I I quite honestly have not really given this the uh, respect that it's due this whole this whole area and I really um, I'm, I'm going I personally and I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be everybody I'm going to go back over this call because I'm, I'm guessing there's a whole lot more than I should be doing with my show than I am right now and uh, so I, and, and everybody else uh, folks are saying that they're blown away uh, Robert by the information so uh, I appreciate I appreciate it um, you know, I just believe, you know, God put certain people in your lives. I didn't know about sponsorship, but to me, the number one sponsorship trainer in the world, um, Brendan Burchard, he happened to be a client of mine, and he teaches a sponsorship seminar. That's right. That's and right. It, um, I think it's $8,000 now. It was six. <laughs> yeah. It was that's why after I'm not giving his name, I plug him all day long. He, it was it was six thousand and oh eight when I started working with him. So anyway, he he kind of you know blew my mind and opened this world of sponsorships on that level. Some of the stuff I've added and incorporated, you know, because of my marketing and you know some of this other stuff. But the real core that sponsorships are for you, and here's what you really can do with them. Because again, even with my first early seminars, I mean, I yeah, I might have got a sponsor here and there, but that, that I won't even call that sponsorship now that I know what it really is. Um, but there isn't much training on sponsorships, and if you do find it, again, you're going to have to pay him eight thousand to go to his event. His home study courses start at two thousand. Um, if his coaching is twenty five thousand, yeah. So for the person who wants to learn that. Um, I think, you know, with you, um, I mean, I don't know what you do with SEO and all that other stuff, but it can be, it can be set up when, when people are looking for sponsorship, because that's not a common thing. I don't, I don't think you're going to go through Barnes and Nobles and find books on how to get sponsorship. You'll do advertising, you'll see marketing, you'll see social media, you'll see all of the typical stuff, but there isn't very much out there on the art of sponsorships. So you have some very valuable training, hopefully the people keep listening to it over and over and over and over until it becomes in their subconscious and they're doing things and thinking a certain way without even thinking about it. Um, but yeah, they got a real gem here. If they keep listening to it and then apply what they're learning and do it, because again, the sponsorships are available for all of us. No, that, that, that's great. So now for the, uh, for the people who can, <laughs> who can afford to work with you, uh, how should they try to get old of you? Okay, sure. Um, my again, my my the company name is Champion Media Worldwide. The the website is championmediaworldwide.com. The office number is eight one five six three 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 seven five. And we also do sponsorships for for companies. There's a flat fee. Uh, it's thirty-five hundred dollars, and then ten percent of the sponsorship that we get. And so again, the the thirty-five hundred is more of a setup fee and account maintenance, and you know I got staff that 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 I pay. And the the real bulk is like I said, the ten percent begins to add up because if we get you you know a nice fifty or a hundred thousand dollars sponsorship or something like that, you know that you know you would pay us ten percent of that. So we do also offer that to clients who just, you know, want an expert to do it um, and take that off their hands. Okay. All right. And, and you, you mentioned uh, folks uh, on this call sending you an email to get, uh, I can't remember what it was. Oh, that's was. right, right, right. Um, the list of the remnant, all of the newspapers that offer remnant and what their rates are. Right. That's right. And so yeah. if you email Champion Media at you reach and I'll spell you reach champion media at u r 
E A C H dot com. So Champion Media at UReach dot com. And if you put ad rates or something like that, uh, you know, webinar rates, something in the subject, you know, I'll, I'll know what you're talking about. And when you get this, it's an Excel file, and when you click it open, it'll it's by state, so you can go to the state you live in. You can look at the cities and then the towns in your entire state. You can see what the size of the, the um, readership is for the newspaper. You can see the size of the ad because a quarter page ad is going to be cheaper than the full page ad, but it's all remnant. Then you're going to see what the full rate card is, and then you'll see what the remnant is. And you guys are going to be blown away when you see, like for example, the Chicago Tribune, a quarter page ad here with a, in the newspaper that has 1.1 million readers every day. A full page ad is something like, um, well, not, not a full page, a uh, uh, quarter page do, doing it the traditional route is $11,000. <laughs> a quarter, and again, that's an ad that's here today and going tomorrow because there's a new paper coming out in the morning. Right, yeah. A, a remnant for that is $1,500. Uh-uh. <laughs> And that is all because you guys, one, you know about this, this tactic, but then you're willing to wait. You know what I mean? I can wait two weeks. I, I mean, there's nothing I'm doing or I'm selling. I'm in that much of a hurry and desperate. I can, I can wait two weeks. If I create a new product and want to see how that product's going to, um, you know, perform or a seminar, you know, that's, again, that's the main reason I do the remnant is to promote a seminar in an area. Nobody calls or goes to the website or signs up. Okay, well, I just spent thirty dollars to see if I need if I can do a seminar. They're not interested. Okay, I'm out thirty dollars. That's not what most people do. They'll buy thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of, of ads, and then it doesn't work. You know, now they're out three thousand dollars. That's almost that's got to almost be more effective than even even pay per click to some degree. You know, for the same kind of thing, a remnant ad. Well, the, well, the I mean, the the, the pay per click is I guess it's, it's if it's not fraud and it's targeted, you know, it's something they're interested in. That's why they clicked it. So that that's great. I know you can pay pennies if you know how to how to set it up right. Um, it's it's just, but it's but it's online. Um, I, I mean, I know online. I, I got you. I, I, I know where you're going with this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just. Just our culture, just just something about something being in the newspaper. People just believe it, you know. <laughs> That's right. Scam, you know, you, you may or may not believe something that you see online. It, that's just the world we live in. You know? Right. We st well, we still live there in spite of how <laughs> advanced you know, things are. So, no, that's great. Uh, Robert, um, you know, um, thank you. Uh, th thank you again. This was, uh, this was awesome um, content and... Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that, that folks, even who are going to be listening to this by archive, are going to be as blown away as the folks who are on the call. And everybody's saying thank you, and that they were really they were really blown away by what you shared. And like I said, I, I have not, in my own, you know, even in my in my in my radio show, I have not I have not touched uh, this, and I need to. So I, I'll, I'll definitely be uh, getting into this uh, a little more. So. I'm glad okay. I, could, I could help, and hopefully I'll hear some success stories over the next couple, coming months. Okay, no, you definitely will. Okay, so everybody, uh, thank you uh, very much for being here, and I'm um, gl definitely glad that you got out, out of it. Uh, and Robert, uh, thank you. Have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care. Okay, thanks, everybody.